Hey, it's Elena Ritchie again, and I run the East Dallas Women Business Collective Facebook group, and I'm here with my sweet friend Megan Lucky. Um, Megan runs Park Bench Photography, and she also is a beauty counter consultant. Is that, did I get the verb right? Is a consultant? Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly awesome. right. Awesome. So, um, anyways, we're going to talk a little bit about that, and thank you for watching our interview. Uh, so, um, I, I take notes on everything, so I'm will have to refer to this quite often. So I apologize. I have notes too. Okay. Good. I have I have your notes that I made notes on. How's nice. that? We're so yeah. efficient. We're okay. efficient nerds, but it's okay. <laughs> um, so tell me about you. You live in, we live in the same neighborhood in Lockwood. We do. I'm only a few streets apart. Yes. I could like wave to you from my front window. Yes. I love and, it. Um, yes, we're in Lockwood. We've lived here for six years. Um, we moved here from Austin and we have two sons and um, we love it. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. So when you moved from Austin, was, is this your first home then? So you've been in Dallas for six years? Yes. Nice. Yes, we we had like a whirlwind weekend of house shopping and I had no idea really where I was in yeah. Dallas. <laughs> but somebody told us if you're moving from Austin, you should be in East Dallas. Nice, yes. Because of the lake and the trees and you know, the people, our vibe is very, I don't know, relaxed and right. Kind of, kind of chill, kind of different yes. than what maybe we thought Dallas would be like. And so we were like, okay, we know in our church where Clayton was going to be working is over here. And so we were like, we want to be in this community. So we just, I think we saw like 13 houses wow. in like one weekend, Elena. Like, you know, that's crazy. That's great though. Just And we just, I don't know. Yeah. So it was crazy, but we ended up here and it worked out. Yay, good, <laughs> good, good, good. Um, so then Clayton, you said he, so he's in ministry. Uh -huh. Yes, he is the pastor of worship and local mission at our church, White Rock Fellowship, and it's off of Northwest Highway. And um, well, now it's a Zoom, it's a Zoom church. Right. We, we meet, <laughs> we're all meeting virtually. Um, but yeah, you know, just adapting and pivoting to all, all this new stuff going on. Right. Yeah. But you know what? God's still in control and the church is still growing. And um, yeah, so you just I have, yeah, exactly. Yay. Yay. And good. So, and then good, good. We're both boy moms. We both have two boys. We both have a Brooks. So. Yes, we both have a Brooks, which gets confusing <laughs> when our kids are, I know. Brooks, get off that thing. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, how have they been through this whole ordeal? I mean, you know, they're so resilient. Like, I feel like kids are just so incredible. It's amazing. And they, yeah, you know, they teach me so much, I think. Um, but it's hard. It's also hard. And I think that we're all kind of feeling that where it's like, you know what? nobody's ever asked our children to learn at home right without their teachers during a global pandemic right and what they're being asked to do is hard and right. so i think i think the first week he was feeling some pressure um but our teachers are great and they're you know we're just doing our best taking things one day at a time right yeah absolutely and we're off on friday so that's interesting no school <laughs> Right. <laughs> so it's like so we stay home like the same thing but no school assignments yes and so I think I'll take yeah. it I'll take it and then you know the younger one is just he's happy all right. the time everybody's so around everybody's Great. around I think he's like this is amazing yeah so. <laughs> good good so then moving on to uh, you know your business and I wanted to talk to you about your passion I when I think of photography I think of well first of all very creative people who go into photography and someone who's very driven by their passion that just seems like a a, a, a career that you pick up because you're passionate about art or for talk you know photography things like that so how did you fall into that yeah well maybe like most people or not it kind of felt like a little bit by accident i mean i i i had always like it was always a hobby for me and i feel like i kind of caught the portrait bug 
when my some just friends started asking me to take their portraits for them. Yeah. And I would do it and um, you know, it'd be like, well, if you um cover my childcare, I'll do it for you for free. I mean, nice. you know, yeah. we always like probably give away way too much at the beginning. Right. <laughs> um, but you know, it's just like making these like I don't know, a camera can kind of like make these moments seem so beautiful and um kind of just capturing this moment in time I think was was really it, it yeah you just kind of catch the bug and keep going yeah, so. I love it I love it and and you know it's it's a job that's flexible you know being in business for yourself it's like it's like wow like you have time and you're there's a lot of challenges that come with being your own boss but that flexibility and all of that is is really really nice. Oh really yeah, enjoyed. I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, and then, so how long have you run or owned Parkridge? Mm. Mm. Well, um, technically I think it was 2012 oh, when wow. I started kind of as a side gig back in Austin. Um, I have my education background is marketing. And so I was doing that for a startup software company after college in Austin. And then after that, I switched to doing communications um, for our large church in Austin that we were at at the time. So I was kind of doing it for fun on the side, just a little outlet, fun outlet, like right after our first son was born. And then when we moved to Dallas, I kind of had this like pretty amazing like setup with my job where I worked part-time in the office and part-time at home. And it was like, I'm just, I, I, it's going to be really hard to find that kind of flexibility right. going to a new city. People d don't know me. Right. <laughs> um, and so I just kind of thought, well, maybe now is just the time to take the leap and do this, you know, to cover um, what would be like my job, um, you know, when we move. And yeah. so, so I would say 2013, I really kind of was okay. like, I'm going to go for it. Right. Good. So then, so your prior job was the communications at the church? Yeah. Okay. How did that help you in, in what you do now? Or did you take any lessons from that position into what you're doing now? I mean, I, I know that my marketing background, communications background and all of that um, has definitely played into what I do now. Although <laughs> a lot of my friends joke about like that for those of us that have like a business education, like they don't, they don't teach you how to run your own business oh, in right. business school. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. like, yeah, I'm like, I, I know I should probably be able to like make a spreadsheet for this and like <laughs> figure this out, but I don't have time for that. You know, like right. I'm sure yeah. I did some sort of like Harvard business review case study, but, um, you know, <laughs> So yes, long story short, I think, you know, a lot of what I do, it's building relationships. Yes. It's, you know, um, building trust that like, like, no trust factor that they talk about in marketing. You know, people have to like you, they have to trust you. I love um, that. Yeah. Like they have to know you and then they have to trust you right. to kind of you know, sign on with you. Yes. I want you to be my photographer, my realtor, you know? And so, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I know I, you're absolutely right. And kind of like goes into another question I had, which is, um, how you set yourself apart. And when I think about my business, the way I feel like I try to set myself apart is trying to be more personal and, um, reaching outside kind of the digital age that we're in and kind of taking the extra step to be close to someone. So, um, I like that you're that you're saying that, especially in your line of work, because there's no you can't take pictures over the internet. Like you have to like be <laughs> that person, and um, and also people have to feel comfortable with you, like comfortable sharing their family and like really precious moments with you. So yeah. um, I think that you have a wonderful personality for something like that. You're very you put people at ease, and I can I can tell that about you, and, and I like that about you. Oh, well, thank you. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a very, it's, it's like a very vulnerable thing to be oh, like, yeah. hi, here's my family. We're all kind of crazy and kind of stressed out because it's family picture day and I'm going to yell at my kids <laughs> <You know? laughs> a lot, <laughs> and my kids aren't going to behave. Um, 
and whatever, or in like a newborn situation, it's like, um, hi, like this is our crazy house. We just had a baby. Um, here's like the one corner of our house that's clean that we are going to take pictures in. Mm. Um, cause that's usually how it is. Right. Or like just n- nursing or just whatever. Yeah. I think you're right. It's, it's I pretty love that. Yeah. I love, excuse me. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so I, I also, I'm also really curious if you were going to kind of guide um, a young female entrepreneur or someone who was just starting out, what kind of advice would you give to her? Whether it be, you know, if she were in a creative position like like yourself, like photography or or something outside, if she was just interested in opening her own business, uh, what kind of advice would you give to her? Yeah. Yeah. Um, This sounds like terrible, well, not terrible advice, but it sounds kind of Debbie Downer, but I think I would say, it's going to be hard. You know, it's going to be hard. Overnight success is never overnight. Right. I think now, you know, I'm six years into this and I still think I am so far away from the goals that I have, (laughs) you know, I mean, I'm just, but you stay in it and you, you keep going and, um, you figure things out, you know? Yeah. And, um, I think that's, that's one thing I would say. And I think like the second thing I would say is it took me so long and maybe this is why it has taken me so long. It took me a very long time to have the confidence that I have. Um, and that's still a struggle for me. And I think maybe for, for women, it is a struggle um, just cause if you don't take yourself seriously, nobody else is going to. Absolutely. You're so right. <laughs> and all the time. Yes. And I think especially as creatives, we, we, oh, we're overworked and we undercharge yes. and you know, like you, I think we just have to value our time. We have to value our work. And if we don't think your work is, is to that point that you want to charge, then you just work really hard to get there. So. Right. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. I have a friend who um, started a, a t-shirt company and we were kind of talking and she was telling me her pricing. I'm like, that seems, that seems really low. And she's, you know, she's like, mm-hmm. well, I'd rather have people calling me than going somewhere else. And, and I was, I just kind of, I just told her, what you charge is that that's not just like what you're doing. It's not the product you're putting out. It's time mm-hmm. away from your husband. It's time away from your kids. Yeah. It's, time, it's time away from so much stuff. So yeah, totally. I totally think women are very guilty of undervaluing what they are bringing to the table. Mm-hmm. And um, if we just could like shift the way that we think about things and I think that'd be phenomenal, but yeah, absolutely. I think that's really good advice mm-hmm. for someone like that. Um, so your target market, do you like, you know, we talked about newborns or do you like weddings? Like what's your yes. favorite, what's your favorite? And then what, what ideally would you work with? I guess. Yes. Right? Yes. So I, so really what park bench photography, that kind of like storefront of my photography, it's, it's to help um, parents slow down and savor the early years, which I would kind of consider, you know, like newborn to five-ish, huh? you know, the, those kind of like, you know, maternity, you know, to kind of, if I could follow a family through this journey, I think I'm happy with that, yeah. you know, like kind of like maternity, newborn, six months, um, a year, things like that. Um, no, I don't shoot weddings. Um, I love shooting moms with their kids. Um, cause I think that we definitely are not in pictures. Enough. Yes, it's true. It's so true. And, um, and just, you know, to, yeah, there's so much like depth of emotion there. I just really like that. Yeah. I love it. So that being said, do you offer like, do you do like packages? You know, if someone comes to you for a maternity session, do you, what, what, what's your, I guess when you find that out, like you're like, okay, here's a maternity. I can maybe, you know, work with this couple for a couple of years what's what's your yes like, what's your business? so so I have a membership um okay. which is like a year-long photography membership I where love you, that I didn't know that yeah. um so you know it's I think um 
it, it's like four sessions in one year for like a base session price. I love it. And then you add on like digitals and you add on products and things like that. Um, so, you know, and you were asking about what sets me apart and I'm by far not the only person that, that does this, but I think that there's so many photographers out there who will just give you your digital images. Mm -hmm. I think we're so like, we're buried in all of our digital content. Like I have so many pictures on my phone. Like I literally like cannot manage them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so I think that what I'm trying to do is like to give people not just like, Oh, here are these like files. Um, but like, Hey, let's figure out a way so that you can enjoy these pictures every single day, I love like that. an album, a, a framed matted print. That's like really good and not like from Shutterfly, you know, that's going right. to like fade in like five years. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm sorry. Shutterfly is fine. <laughs> I don't mean, I'm not, I don't know if like you are like are sponsored by them or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. So you're good. You're on safe ground. No, like, you know, giving giving families like actual like heirloom pieces that are gonna be with you and that are gonna like serve you all the time and yes. not just like taking up space on your computer. Right. Oh yeah. We don't need that. No, I, do need that. I think about that sometimes too. This is and this is really depressing. But you know, I I've had a grandmother and a grandfather pass, and I remember, you know, we'd go to their house each time and there'd be a trunk there's always a trunk in grandma's house of pictures of course and yes. we go through just pictures for hours and we you know sit and talk about it and it was just such a special time that i have with my family after that right member passed and yeah i think about that very morbidly and my boys won't have that because i have everything on my phone <laughs> they're not gonna be like all gather around the computer right <laughs> pictures and stuff so um i like that i think that's special again something else that kind of sets you apart um kind of bringing it back to how it used to be like prints things you hold tangible things you can hang on the wall album i love that. i love it so mm -hmm. um and so i want to talk about beauty counter of course because i know that's um quickly becoming a passion of yours and so tell me about the company yeah. I know that beauty counter kind of does things that other um beauty companies don't do so tell me a little bit about that yeah so um beauty counter has been in business for about se seven years i think um, and their mission, it's a mission driven company and it's to put safer cosmetics into the hands of everyone. Um, we have very, very little regulation in the United States on what we put on our skin, on our faces, makeup, skincare, all of that. Um, and there are so many, there are just all these questionable chemicals. And so, um, what beauty counter is trying to do is to advocate for better laws so that any of our kids can be able to walk into CVS or Walgreens or whatever and not have to worry about that. So they're, so they're advocating for new laws. They're educating people. I mean, like six years ago when I started using beauty counter, like I didn't know it was important to like look at the ingredients in my right. skincare. Yeah. No idea. Right. And, and so it was like, Oh, <laughs> okay. Like I can look at skin deep database, which is online and you can put in anything that you use every single day and it will give you a one to 10 rating on like how safe your stuff is. And you can do that with any product that you have. And so, so they, they advocate, they educate, but then they also formulate products that are like, they actually work and they don't have um, these harmful or questionable chemicals, PD counter has a never list. That's like 1500, um, chemicals that they will never use in their products. So, so stuff that's like so hard for us. Like I, I, I'm like paralyzed in a, in a aisle in the, in the grocery store thinking about like what to buy for my oh, kids. No. So yeah. this is you know what I mean? I'm just like right. looking at all these ingredients. And so life is, you know, like maybe now we have time for that. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't, right, yeah. but, like, <laughs> but it's just like, I don't have time for that. And so to have a trusted source to go to, that's like, okay, I can, I can trust beauty counter. And so, right. and um, yeah, you know, the, the, the story about the company is spread person to person. And so they have consultants and we are this like, you know, little group of people that care about what's going on and they want to, 
help and we, we do sell products. You can make money with it. You can build a team with it, all that stuff. So, you know, photography is like by myself. And so this is something fun to do yeah, that's with other people. Absolutely. So, I, you know, I'm, yeah. Well, I think those things go really well together, like photography and skincare. Like you want, you want to look good in your picture. So <laughs> I think it's totally. You know what? I never have thought about that. Yes. Elena Ritchie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, maybe three months before your uh, photo session, you should start a beauty there care regimen. <laughs> there and you go. Yes, yes. <laughs> I like it. I like I've it. I've seen this. Yes. <laughs> so what made you decide to kind of get into to, to this stuff? Was it you were craving another creative outlet? You know, and I'll be I'll be honest and maybe just a little bit transparent, but I was thinking like, um, you know, in 10 years, am I gonna be wanting to to do what I'm doing now? Right. You know? Yeah. And um, am I gonna be, I don't know, wanting to run around with two year olds, which is super fun now, but right. just, kind of, you know, thinking through that or just thinking about like, well, what if I ever wanted to take a step back? I mean, photography is something that it requires me mm -hmm. to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't really scale myself. Right. Really. Um, and so I think that, I mean, I think for anybody that's in business on their own should kind of be thinking about these things. Right. What, you know, what if something happens in my family mm -hmm. where I cannot do this job that requires so much of me? It's so like hard. Yeah. what happens if there's a global pandemic and I can't literally, it's illegal for me to operate my business right now. Right. Right. And of course, I didn't think about that. I right. mean, <laughs> right, right, which is odd because I'm an Enneagram six. Which <laughs> I was wondering like, if Enneagrams are going to come up. <laughs> of course, it will. <laughs> so yeah, just having that like diversity of income, um, I think, is something that all of us who are you know in business for ourselves should kind of be thinking about if that's. If that's something that is important. Yeah, no, I love it. I think it's perfect. So how's it been kind of marrying the two companies with your personal life? Like you're a mom, you have two boys, you have a husband, like you're so much going, now you're a homeschool mom, there's so much going on. How has it been like, like kind of bringing it all together and, and not letting the ball drop on anything? Has that been difficult? Oh, I mean, I'm sure balls have been dropped. <laughs> I can't promise that they haven't. Um, but, you know, I wish I could say that I had this like amazing weekly schedule where I do this on Mondays and this on Tuesdays, right. but I, I don't right now. I think I, I do have a uh, planner where I will like plan out the week and kind of prioritize tasks and yeah, things yeah. like that. And you know, the, the truth is, is like uh, some things take the front seat, other things take the back seat on certain weeks. And, um, I just figure it out and I know that I can't, I just can't do it all. Right. And so I just kind of have to let some stuff go. Right. Yeah. I think that's, you know, that's smart. Kind of the same way. Yeah, absolutely. That's super smart. But and you are like the busiest person that I know. I feel like I could be three of me and do what you do. <sighs> <laughs> no, no. I, I um, think that that might be true. <laughs> I, um, and I was about to say this anyway, so I'll say it right now. Um, I think it's so important to have a spouse or a partner who supports you. And I know Aaron, for me, is that person. Like, I couldn't do half what I do if he weren't so supportive and accessible. He is the, you know, the kind of job where he can be, you know, pretty accessible to me and to the boys. And um, Clayton seems like he's the same, like super supportive of, of everything that you do and everything you want to do. And I think that's huge. Totally. Yeah. To have someone who will, uh, believe in you, you know, kind of, <laughs> uh, think that your work is important, even if right. you're like, Oh no, I should, you know, I'm going to do this. And yeah, no, you should do that. I'm fine. You know, right. like I got, I got this. I love you know, it. Yeah. That's so happening, important. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good. Um, let me see. Did I hit all my questions? Oh, no, no, no. This was a big one I wanted to ask you about social media. Um, what, do you, what? So, first of all, do you prefer posting on Instagram? Hey, Clayton. <laughs> Helena says hi. 
<laughs> I have my AirPods in. So you oh, I just saw them walk by. Um, do you prefer Instagram or Facebook for your social media posts? And what is what does it look like in terms of your referrals? Do you, do you get referrals from social media, or is it mainly? Do you kind of look at it more like for exposure? Okay. Well, referrals. You know, I do get a lot of people that tag me when people are asking for referrals on Facebook. Mm -hmm. My, my Facebook business page is terrible. Um, I really don't post there. If, if you want to hang out with me on social, which I would love it. If everybody did, I'm on Instagram. Um, you do post I, a lot on Instagram. I love it there. Um, it feels a lot nicer or just like not as like chaotic all the time. There's no opinions there. They're just pretty people to look at. <laughs> right? I know. Let's get some pretty stuff to look at. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I have gotten some some leads from Instagram. I think part of my Instagram approach is it, it is back to that like no trust kind of thing. Um you know, I'm trying to share a little bit about who I am or what people can expect from me. Kind of like a, also like a portfolio mm -hmm. for a photographer, um, things like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What about, you mentioned a few questions back about goals. You're not where you want yeah. to be in terms of goals. What, can you share any of those yeah. future goals? Well, one of, one of my goals is really to like have like a, a full-time salary with what I'm doing. Um, but I am working like kind of, I, I'm just not working very much really. Um, okay. I, I have two days a week from nine to two to gotcha. run my, run my business and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I mean, still like there are some, there's some months, I mean, now it's all, it's all crazy now, right? but right. like, you know, there are some months where I'm, I'm booking the amount of sessions that I want each um, month, which mm -hmm. with the amount of time I have to give is four sessions. Right. Um, and then there are other months where I, I don't. And right. so, you know, I, it's just, it's, I don't know. Yeah. So it's just rolling with it. And well, is, is photography cyclical? Like real estate's extraordinarily cyclical depending on you know the, the time of year and some right. uh, photography is the same would you say i mean you know as family photography yes okay like people want their fall photos for oh, sure right. yeah which i love doing and catching up with people um but really i'm trying to build the bulk of my business with like newborns milestones that are like you know okay my baby's six months old now and i really want to capture that or three months old now Right. Um, cause babies are born all the time mm -hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't depend on the weather being good right? <laughs> and all that. Right. So, um, yeah. Okay. But I, but like summer is summer's pretty slow, gotcha. especially for Texas. Cause it's super hot outside. Oh, yeah. Gross. Um, yeah. And people are traveling and right. so fall and spring are like the pretty high seasons. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um let's see let's see let's see i really want to do rapid fire questions with you because okay let's do it okay um and nothing's too like personal <laughs> i don't think you so don't be hey, afraid. hey man don't be afraid of my you know <laughs> okay um so dark chocolate or milk chocolate dark coffee or tea coffee Describe yourself as a teenager in three words. Awkward, dramatic, and, um, oh my gosh. Um, like deep, a deep thinker. Okay. Okay. Is that dramatic. That's, that's like the same uh, thing. Could be. Okay. Okay. Or, go on. Go with that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like me when I was a teenager. Um, what are three things that are always in your purse? Sunscreen. Nice. Oh, because you're so ready. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I okay. I always have sunscreen. My wallet. But everybody has a wallet in their business cards. Oh yeah. Oh, you're so good. Um, and 
um, hair, hair ties. Oh, nice. That's good. You're so, I always forget my business cards. Always, always, always. And that's so bad <laughs> to do that. And then um, sunscreen, you're so good to keep that. I, so I'm darker, and, but Aaron's more fair. So the boys have his skin tone. Um, and then I, I, I would always forget. I felt so bad as a, as a new mom because their little necks would get all red when we went out in the summer. And it just never occurred to me. <laughs> sunscreen. I just didn't grow up putting sunscreen. Yes. I don't need it. Yeah, um, it, it, it gives me a crazy amount of anxiety more really? than it should. Like, like getting sunburned is like. Yeah, so I'm so beauty counter has sunscreen, right? It freaks me out. Um, y yes, Elena, well, okay, beauty counter I, okay. has sunscreen. Oh. They have actually, they have this really great, um, like it's a sunscreen stick. Oh, nice. Great. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mail you a sample of the Perfect. sunscreen. I so love it. So you can it. have it. I love it. Thank Even though you. you don't need it. Well, I probably do. I mean, I should. I Next should. time the sun comes out, you can put it on, take a walk, and see okay. how it Test it out. Okay. okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Well, seriously, as I age, though, I, my skin's getting thinner, so I'm sure I should be using something on my face. Is that a, I guess that's an age thing. Okay, what is the first thing you do in the morning? <laughs> Drink coffee. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Um, Target or Walmart? Target. Well, okay, that's a little bit more complicated of a uh -oh, question for me. Okay, hold on. But it is rapid fire. So Target, because I don't want to walk into a Walmart. Okay. Yeah, no, gotcha. Totally. If you could add one word to the dictionary, what would it be? <laughs> um, Aaron said crumb. Huh? I went through the, <laughs> I went through the question. Crunk is not, a, is it not in the dictionary? I don't, I guess not. I said tumped. Do you ever say tumped? Like that just tumped over. Do you say that? No, <laughs> I do not say that. I bet I say something that's not in the dictionary. To. You have to. We can come back to it. We can come okay. back to that one. Uh, what is one food you would, you would never want to give up? Cereal. Nice. Favorite color? Um, hot pink. Cat or dog person? Dog. What is something that always makes you laugh? Um, Shit's Creek. Uh, I I started watching that. I need to I need to watch that again. First celebrity okay. crush. Zach Morris. Yes, yes. <laughs> what is your most useless talent? My most useless talent? Well, your one useless <laughs> talent. <laughs> um, oh gosh. I, you know, I don't have like a stupid human trick. Like I can't even like whistle. Oh yeah, me either. I can't. I just, I don't, I can't like do weird things with my, I don't know. Can I skip that one? <laughs> I'm just that not one. that <laughs> interesting. Who is the messiest person you know? Oh, well, I mean, this is recorded, Elena. <laughs> I won't tell him. Um, oh, I don't know. Because Clayton's really neat. Oh, is he? Okay. And well, say yes. one of the boys. And what like boys? my boys, I mean, the messier of the two is probably Brooks. Oh, I read yeah. likes things in his place, in, uh, in their place. Yes. Nice. So, but I was a pretty messy kid. Okay. So you. So maybe me. Maybe just <laughs> me. Yeah. Um, let me see. Favorite movie? Um, you know what? I just, um, gosh. <laughs> I don't Love actually. I'm terrible at oh, this. Good no, you're good. You're good. You should you're have good. a timer and just be like, eh. <laughs> I'll do that next time. If you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? You don't have to talk for 30 seconds, but what would you say? Oh gosh. I mean, I guess it would probably just be like, God loves you. And yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like um, it. Yeah. I like it. Socks on or off when you sleep? Socks? Yeah. Off. Good. Yes. That's weird. To sleep with their socks on weird. Um, it's really cold. Uh, I still can't. I still can't do it. Um, okay. Do you pour your milk on before or after you put the cereal in the bowl? After. Good. 
Right. There's oh, no she, other way to do it. Yeah, it's weird. It's creepy. Uh -huh. That yeah, that's creepy to do it the other way. Yes. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, ghosts, real or not? Not. What did you say as a kid when asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? A magazine editor. Oh, I love it. Um, there's so many movies. I, I totally get that. There's a lot of movies from, you know, I, how old are you? 38. Okay, I was going to say 37. Age group. Gosh. <laughs> you can tell it's after 930. <laughs> we'll roll with 38. Um, okay. there's a, I feel like there's a lot of movies that involve magazine editors, like 13 going on 30 is the first thing that pops in my mind. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, that wasn't when we were kids, though. Was it? I don't know. I still feel like a kid sometimes. Mm. This was fun. Yeah. Did we do it? Yeah, we did it. <laughs> we're done. We're done. We have some follow-ups, though, on those rapid-fire questions. I mean, I, I'm so sorry. You, I did terribly. No. I just, no, I failed the job. rapid fire. Okay. Okay. No, you did a good job. You did a good job. So okay. tell me, um, websites that we can look at for you. Okay. So website for photography is parkbenchphoto.com. Parkbenchphoto.com. Um, see stuff there. My Instagram is at parkbenchphoto. So that would be fun. Follow yeah. and say hi. It's a good one. And um, Beauty Counter, you can um, probably if you, well, it's like beautycounter.com slash my first and last name, okay. Megan Lucky, L-U-C-K-I-E. Oh. I'll put links on the post on Facebook too. Yeah, Yay. totally. Yay. Okay. On, on a personal note, thank you so much. You've always been such a huge supporter of me and, and the crazy uh -huh. stuff I do. So I really appreciate that. And I just think you're um, just, so fun to be around and, and talk to you. I like I like our monthly coffees when we get to me too and chat. So me too. Oh, I had to ask you, but you can tell me later. Um, I wanted to ask if you had a life hack or a recipe. But post it on Facebook later if you have a life hack or a recipe. Okay. I will. I can learn from because I'm I'm trying to learn to cook. <gasps> I'm not I'm not that person. Aaron's always been the cook in the family, and I am trying my best. I made goulash tonight. Right, that I can't eat. I can't eat goulash, but I made it for everybody else. But it, they said it was good. I don't know because I couldn't taste it. But if they said it, you should be making things that you can eat. <laughs> I have to eat boring stuff. So the boys, I have to have no carbs, and the boys would like that. So now they yeah. would eat. Yeah, but that's really sacrificial of you. I'm so good. You're, just, you're amazing. I'm just that kind of person. You are. <laughs> we all know it. I know. Um, okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you You're soon. You're welcome. Bye, okay. friends. Bye.